What's up guys, Taurus Cousin here. In this video, we're talking about design patterns and general best practices in React. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna take a component and refactor it using those patterns and best practices and see just how better off we are. All right, cool. So this is the component that we're working with for this video. It's called the user products page. And as the name implies, this is the page that we get to see the products of a specific user. And although this isn't such a big component, it's only 67 lines of code, there's enough here that we can improve to actually see the value of using design patterns and best practices in React. So the first thing that we have here at the top is we have an interface that defines our filters. Currently, we only have this created at property of type date. Then we have the actual props of the component. We only have user ID. Then here in the state, we have a piece of state for the filters, right? It only has the created at. We're going to use this to be able to filter our products that we see on the screen. Then we have a state for the modal. Is the modal open or not? And then here we have a fetch that is done through React Query. And this one is specifically fetching the user using the user ID from the props, right? We're going to get to this in just a moment. But for now, let's move on. Then here we have another fetch. This one is fetching the user products. It's using the user ID and the filters from the state to actually fetch the products with those filters and then displayed through this products property right here. Then we have a handle button click function, which will basically toggle the modal. Then we have here this use effect, which is pretty common in a lot of applications where you want to track a page view event, right? We are on the user products page. So we want to track a page view of ID user products page and then send some optional data like the user ID to then later attribute this to the correct user. Then we have this is loading variable, which is defined as either is loading user or is loading products. These come directly from React Query right here. And then if loading is true, we return a div that says loading. Otherwise, we return this JXS. We have one header tag for the username. We have a button to open the modal. If the modal is open, we're rendering this user products filters component. We're passing the set filters from the state as the on change right here. And then we're rendering the products right here if we have any products. Great. So now we have our component. We understand it. Let's actually improve this. And the first thing that I want to look at is this modal right here, specifically this piece of state, this function that updates the state here, and then all of this JSX that renders the modal and the actual contents of the modal. The thing is, whenever you have state in your React application, you always want to ask yourself, does this state actually need to be here or can it be moved somewhere else? somewhere else being either in the parent, right? Maybe you have another component like this one that needs this piece of state, so it would go in the parent. Or can you move this piece of state a little further down to not have the entire user products page re-render whenever its modal open changes, right? Because every time that we change this value through this function here, we're causing a whole re-render of this entire user products page component. So if we can avoid this, then it's a better thing to do. So in our case right here with is modal open, if we look at where this is actually used, it's only used here in this function. And then in this JSX right here, we have the button to open the modal. And then we actually render the modal contents. What I would do is I would put all of this in its own separate component to follow the single responsibility principle that is a design pattern in React, which essentially means that we can have one component that only handles this button right here, along with the filters and have it encapsulated away from this component. This is also, as I've said, going to remove this state here, which is going to prevent this component from re-rendering whenever it changes. So let's actually do that. Let's come here and create a new file. I'm going to call this one user products filters button.tsx. This is going to be, as we said, a custom component. So I'm going to do rjsfc p for props user products filters button. And then for now, we're just going to give this a div. We're going to save this. And then what I want to do is take all of this JSX right here and then just copy this and put this inside of this div right here. Then we need to import user products filters. So we'll do that. And then we need here, as you can see, if I save, we need is modal open, right? So we're going to come back here to our main component and we're going to take is modal open and we're going to put it in this component instead and then import use state from React. 
And then we need two things. We need this handle button click function, which we can get right here. So this is no longer needed in this component. So I'll take this one and then I'm gonna put this here. And then we need the set filters function, which comes from this filter state right here. Now, you always wanna ask yourself, just like we did about this piece of state, where does it belong? You also wanna ask yourself, does this filter state belong here or can we also move it in this component? And the thing is, if you look at where filters is being used, it's used here with this request. We're fetching the user products and we're passing the filters to this function. So as long as this function lives in this component, because it depends on filters, filters also has to come with it. So we're not going to move this function inside of this component because it doesn't make sense. So this means that filters has to remain in this component. So then what we need to do is we need to pass this set filters function to this component so that it can then pass it to this user products filters. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create here a props we can do on change and let copilot be very helpful and complete it for us. I'm going to import this filters right here, save this, and then we're going to do it here on change and then pass here on change, save this with the right wording. And now what we've done is we had this component take the on change and then pass it further along here. Some people might say this is prop drilling, but honestly, if you think about it, it's only two layers deep. So I wouldn't even consider this prop drilling. And realistically in a React application, you can't completely ignore or get rid of prop drilling. So this is perfectly fine. Then we can come here to our main component. We can go down here where we removed our JSX and we can just put user products filters page button and then on change we pass it the set filters and now we have everything that we had it before but now this is encapsulated in its own component the naming of this component makes it very clear as to what this component actually does and we're following the single responsibility principle design pattern in react which is a great thing then the next thing that I want to look at is this fetch right here that is fetching the user. And specifically, I want to look at these two properties right here. So we have GC time and still time, and they're both an hour. These are properties that will tell React Query to cache this data for an hour and not hit the backend whenever we call fetch user and instead return the cache response. So the fact that we have this here and the fact that this is dependent on the user ID, we can also reasonably assume that you might use this in other places as well. Maybe there's another page that needs to fetch another user and you wanna use the same piece of code right here. And when you find yourself in that situation, that is a prime candidate to extract this into a custom hook. So what we can do, we can come here, we can create a new file. I'm gonna call this one use fetch user .ts, and I'm gonna do export const use fetch user. Give this for now a user ID because we'll need the user ID that is going to be number. And then for now, it's not going to return anything because we haven't implemented the function yet. Then I'm going to come back here and I'm literally going to take all of this, copy this and then paste it inside of this hook and then save. Then we need to import fetch user. So we'll do that. We also need to import use query. So we'll also do that. And then instead of destructuring the variables here, like we have, we're instead going to return and get query. And then we're going to return the query so that the parent, the caller of this hook can actually do the destructuring and access all of the properties that they need, all right? So this means that if we go here, we can replace all of this piece of code with our new hook, use fetch user, and then all we have to do is provide it user ID, and then we are done. We've essentially achieved the same thing, but this time using a custom hook, which has the benefits that if we ever need to change these values here, GC time or still time, we can do it here, and we can also have this apply to any other other place that we have used this use fetcher hook. And this is a really great design pattern in React that's called custom hooks. Whenever you find yourself in a situation where you have repeated code like this that you might want to use in different places, you always want to extract it into a custom hook. You want to do all of the logic inside and then use that custom hook instead. It's much scalable, it's much better. And as you build React applications, you're going to see that this is a better alternative. Cool. Now, the last thing that I want to look at in this video, and this is also very important, so make sure to stick around, it's this piece of code right here. Now this, what we're gonna do isn't exactly a design pattern, but it's something that you always want to do in your React applications because it's going to save you a lot of bucks. If you look here at this piece of code, we have an effect that on mount and whenever this user ID changes, will track a page event. The problem with this is that there's nothing that can guarantee me 
that I'm actually calling the correct key here for the page event and that I'm passing all of the correct information. I can have a typo here, I can do W and there's no error that I'm gonna have. I can also put here a typo again, have a different letter and also there's no error that I'm gonna have. And if I do this, if I manage to ship this into production, I'm never going to track these actual page events for this specific page because the keys here are wrong. If I forget to add the data, for example, I might not send the required data to properly attribute this to the correct user in the analytics provider, right? So we want to avoid this. And the way that we're gonna avoid this is by creating our own custom layer in between. And with the power of TypeScript, we're gonna enforce that we always call this correctly and that we always call a correct page ID with the correct data that belongs to that specific page ID. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here and create a new file. And this is also going to be a custom hook. As you see in React, React was built to be used with custom hooks. So it's really, really important. I'm going to call this one use page view event, actually use track page view. It's going to be simpler and it's a little bit more descriptive. Do this. And then inside of this file, I'm going to do export const use track page view. And for now, I'm just gonna make it equal, not take anything. And we're gonna handle the implementation in just a moment, because first we wanna create the types for the specific events that we can actually send. So I'm gonna come here and make some new lines at the top. And first we're gonna start with this page event right here, this user products page. So I'm gonna do interface, user products page, and I'm gonna call this event. This one is gonna have page ID, that's gonna be user products page. And then the data is gonna be user ID number. I'm gonna save this and we have it. And now, although we don't have another page, this is the only page that we have, what I wanna do is create a new page just so that you get to see how this would look like if we had multiple page pages. So I'm gonna do interface product page, let's do that. And then here page ID, let's see, can Copilot do it? Product page, perfect. And then data, Copilot product ID number, right? So we have two pages, the user products page event, and then this one, and also this one should be event as well. Save this and we're good. Now what we can do is we can define our actual page event. So we can do type page event equals either user products page event or product page event. So in the future, if you ever have other pages, you can define a new interface and just add it here and everything is going to work accordingly. You can define your data specifically for this page ID. And now here in this use track page view custom hook, we can just do event page event. And then optionally, because we are going to take this entire code, including the use effect and these dependencies here, we are going to create another parameter, call it depths. And then this one's gonna be unknown. And it's gonna be an array of unknown. And we are going to save this like so. Then we're gonna come back here to our main component and we're gonna take all of this, remove this, and then put it inside of this component right here. We are going to import use effect. We are going to import track event. And then here, instead of user ID, we're gonna pass it depths. Then in this track event, we can guarantee, we'll actually have to guarantee at least once that this is correct, right? So this is on us. So we're guaranteeing that page view is correct. It's the correct key of the event that we wanna send. And then instead of all of this, all that we have to do is just pass event and we can save. We've done the same thing, but now we've guaranteed that this event can only ever be one of these two user products page event or product page event, or in the future, any other page event that we want to add to our application. Then coming back to our main component, we can just import this hook and use it. So we can do use page track page view. And then we just need to give this the event. So that's gonna have page ID. And again, IntelliSense is gonna know directly. We can either have product page or user products page. So we'll just do that. And then here the data is gonna be user ID. And then we can save. And what is the error here? Expected two arguments, but got one. Right, we also need to provide it the dependencies. So that's gonna be user ID in an array because this is going to be an array. So just with this hook, we can now put this on any page that we have and we can give it the correct page ID and this is now properly typed. So we prevent ourselves from actually making any mistakes. If I remove this data here, 
it's going to complain to me that I don't have the correct data. Or if instead I provide it, but I provide something else, a string, for example, it's also going to complain that user ID expects a number and not a string, right? So we have complete type safety and we've now prevented ourselves from ever shipping any code in production that is not going to work with our analytics provider. Now, although this isn't your typical design pattern in React, it's always a good idea to do it this way and to think about it in this way, especially if you're using TypeScript in your React application. You always want to have proper types for everything that you do in your components, and you always want to try to create a reusable layer between the thing that you're actually calling and the caller of said thing. Doing it this way, you can always guarantee that the thing is going to be called in the way that you can predict, and you can prevent shipping dangerous bugs in your production applications, which is always a thing that you want to try to avoid. So there you go. That's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this, if you learned anything, I would really appreciate a subscribe. You can click here to do it. You can also click here to watch a different video of mine, which I'm sure that is super, super awesome because YouTube is the one recommending it to you. And with that being said, as always, my name has been Doris Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.